Okay, so 6.4 exponential growth and decay. So what we were talking about in class was that a lot of things are changing in life at an exponential rate. And where that exponential rate comes from is from this differential equation. So what changes, population, money, radioactive elements, um, also the coronavirus goes exponentially up until we bring it down and then it tries to go creep up again. Um, things like that, okay? Uh, so differential equation, and it says that we are changing at a rate proportional to the amount present. So changing at a rate proportional, which is multiplied by the amount present. Okay, so how does this work out? How does this turn into an exponential equation? Let's see. So let's say we have dy over dt. That means that y is our output, and then this is in terms of t. So kind of like in terms of x, right? So t and y are our variables. All right, let's separate those variables. All the y's go to the left side, all the t's go to the right side. Well, everything else goes to the right side. How about that? And then I no noted, sorry, right here that k is our constant rate of change. It could be k, it could be r for rate, it could be c. I mean, right now we're just using k. All right, so we divided and we multiplied. And then when we separate our variables, we anti uh, anti take the antiderivative of both sides, sorry. And then the antiderivative of the left side is ln absolute value, the antiderivative of the right side, people like to think that this is a variable. It is not, it is a constant. So what is the antiderivative of, let's say, 5? It would be 5t, right? So the antiderivative of k is kt. All right, well, I'm solving for y, so e to the power, both sides, raise both sides. <laughs> by e, and then you have the absolute value of y equals e to the power of kt times e to the power of c, which is really c. So e to the power of some number, a number to the power of another random number is just another random number. And then they have the same basis, so it's multiplication here. Okay, well, if this is absolute value, if I take away the absolute value, it's y equals plus or minus. But if I multiply the c in front, then I don't need that plus or minus because C is any number anyway, so it could be positive or negative. All right, and then C is some number, but we can say, all right, if C is a number and Y is a number, C is the number that goes in, this is our initial value, and then this is the number that comes out. This should look very familiar. In Algebra 2, we did a lot of compound interest and we learned this formula. So you know, you compounded monthly and yearly and daily, and then there was a formula for compounding continuously, and all we really told you about it was, oh, there's this E, <laughs> and it's gonna be um, really important, and it's used a lot, and this is the formula, Y equals PERT. So I like to remember PERT because I find it to be really easy to remember. P stands for the principal, so you plug in money, your principal goes into the bank, and then it multiplies by a bunch of stuff, and then you get money out of the bank, okay? So compounding continuously. This is still the same formula. P is your principal. Y sub zero is your initial value. It's the same thing. So the law of exponential change is this. This is equivalent, this is equivalent to your very simple version of a differential equation where it's being multiplied by a constant rate of change, by a constant, okay? And then you'll always end up with basically y equals pert, or y equals y sub zero equals e to the power of either rt or kt, because r and k are both just rates. If r is positive, then it's gonna be exponential growth. You guys know what that looks like as a graph. If r is negative, it's exponential decay. So it goes down this way, right? Okay. So compound interest, it's been a while, but you know, just to kind of get back into some of this and where it's used in life. So compound interest, you put money into the bank again, and then it'll be like, oh, this is compound. It's, you know, you're gonna earn money at this rate of 5%, and it's compounded daily or monthly or whatever. 
um, n is compounded per year. So that number is, you know, if it's daily, it's 365, right? And then this is to the power of nt. All right. So we, you know, we've done this before. So count, uh, and then compounded continuously is pert. So I just wrote that same formula from before. All right, so let's look at this first question. It's just, this is like a really basic one. So you put 3,000 into an account, it's paying for 5% interest. How much money are you gonna have in 10 years if A, you compound quarterly, B, monthly, C, continuously? So you're using these two formulas. And I want you to write A, and then go ahead and fill everything in. And then B, go ahead and fill everything in, leave some, maybe two spaces and then a C, and then go ahead and fill everything in. Just do it, please, please, please just do it because I want you to check, I don't want you to copy. Because if you copy, you might not realize that you're doing that wrong. So 5% is 0 0.05, right? It's not a five. And then um, make sure that you can put this into the calculator. I'm assuming you can. If you do your homework, you can practice that way, okay? Um, if it's money, you're going to round to whatever good thing you round to, right? So there's no like 0.865. You just round to whatever uh, cents, dollars and cents. All right, so go ahead and check in your other answers. I think these are right, hopefully. And then... We did back together on the left side, but let's take one more look at it. So this says, oh, we didn't do number two, just kidding. How long will it take an investment to triple in value if it earns 7% interest compounded continuously? So you think in your head, okay, what formula am I using? Oh, continuously, that's pert, okay. So you have y equals y sub zero equal, or oh, sorry, times, e to the power of rt or kt. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so what are you going to plug in? How long does it take for an investment to triple? So how long does it take? You're, you're trying to find time, so you're trying to find t. And then for an investment to triple, you have a y equals y sub zero. What are you going to plug in there? Well, if you plug in a dollar, you get three. If you plug in a hundred dollars, you get three hundred dollars. So plug in something that makes sense to you but one works really nicely because one of something you can just you know leave it like that and then it's just an e right and then you're trying to get to that t so you're going to ln both sides and then now ln of e is one take that power rule that you have with uh logs and you can pull that up front you have this go ahead and divide and then you plug it into your calculator so whatever they want you to round to, go ahead and round there, okay? Okay, so this is the one that we did together, and then this is the one I said I, I think my uh, grammar was off before. Okay, so suppose the half-life of a carbon sample is 5,700 years. Find the age of a sample in which 20% of the radioactive substance originally present has decayed. So 20% of it is now gone. Okay, so um, I asked you guys to draw a little slash here like that. And then we're gonna start with the actual part of the problem that we're trying to find. And then hopefully we don't have to do this left side over and over again and you notice something about that left side, okay? But we're gonna start with, so we're gonna ignore this. And then you're starting with find the age of the sample so y equals part so this is some sort of like half-life is oh let me explain half-life i explained it in class but half-life is how long it takes for something to become half of what it was so how long does it take for um your cough to have half of the viruses um still around in the air okay in that room or whatever um so uh, what would you plug in? Well, maybe a one and a half. So you have this. And then you are looking for, if you just look at this part, you're looking for the age of the sample. That's a T. So you're looking for T, but you don't have enough information to find T yet. But we, you know, we left this blank. But how did we get this? How did we get this rate? 
Well, on the other side, we started with y equals perts. And then we thought about, okay, it says half-life is this much. So if half-life is this much, then that means if that's a one, that could be a half, right? That's how long it takes. Like how long it takes would be t. And then if this started with one and I end up with one half because that's half-life, then I fill in this way. And then now I see, oh, I can solve for r. That's how I put r into here. So I have to solve for r first here. And then I ln both sides. And I get ln equals and divide. OK, there's a reason that I wrote 1 half instead of 0.5. So I want you guys to recognize the half-life of something that takes, if it takes 57 years as half-life, then you get r equals ln 1 half of 5700. If something else takes five years, then your rate would be ln 1 half over five. If they're talking about doubling time or tripling time, what changes here? Right here, this turns into a two or a three. Okay, so you can memorize what I just said, <laughs> or you can do this every single time, but I wouldn't wanna do that every single time, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that R, we're gonna plug it into here, like you know it already says, and then we ln both sides because we're looking for T, that's a power, and we've got to you know bring it down. So ln both sides, so ln of E is one, this comes down. We're gonna divide by that fraction. You can either divide by that fraction or you can multiply it by the reciprocal, it doesn't matter, but you're gonna do it in your calculator, and then you have that final answer. Okay. So on the right side, we're going to add um, a little statement and we're going to remind ourselves why this is always true. Um, again, you can either remember this and I'll show you on the right side or you got to do it every single time. Okay, so it starts with half life. So half life is always going to be whatever you plug in, you have half of that same thing left over. All right, so that's half-life. So then what happens is you really have this because you can divide by the initial value and then you natural log both sides and then you get kt equals ln of one half. So if you divide by k or you divide by t, you get these two statements. So the time it takes is going to be ln of one half divided by the rate. The rate is going to be ln of one half divided by the time. I mean, no matter what you divide by, right? That's what happens. Which means that doubling time is going to be that same kind of formula. Tripling time is going to have a three here. So if you want to remember this, which is very helpful in general, then there you go. Okay, but if not, you have to do this work over and over and over again. So it is up to you. All right, I'll see you guys later and then you're gonna ask me questions if you have any questions. Good luck.